Enjoy this free preview from My Outdoor TV. With the largest library of outdoor shows, we are the home of the adventurous, the champions, the legends. My Outdoor TV, try us free. This time, it's the AG Cup Elimination Competition with a record $75,000 at stake. Plus, history for sale at one of the largest military gun shows, selling and teaching stories from the past. This is Shooting USA, reporting the stories of America's shooting sports. It's the fourth year for the richest rifle tournament in the world. It's the brainchild of my friend Tom Fuller, and to say it's a success is a bit of an understatement. Thanks, Sean. We have put nearly three quarters of a million dollars into the pockets of these competitors, and this year, there's more money on the line than ever. That's right, $75,000 is up for grabs. We've already run a two-day, 20-stage match to set up the final for the big money. That's right, there are 17 competitors competing in these last 10 courses of fire, and here are your qualifiers. Chad Heckler from Howell, Michigan. I'm shooting a 6BR Francis Cologne from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I shoot the 6mm Dasher. Jeff Gary from Chattanooga, Tennessee, 6 Dasher. Derek Webster from Montgomery, Texas, 6mm Dasher. Chris Katalik and I'm from Spring, Texas, uh, 6 Dasher. Cole Higginbotham from Carryville, Tennessee, six dasher. I'm Austin Bushman, I'm from Hooker, Oklahoma, six millimeter dasher. Uh, ben Gossett from Warrington, Missouri. I shoot a six dasher. Nathan Cushman from Stewart's, Illinois, six BR. Troy Lawton and Columbus, Georgia, six GT. Jason Green from Albany, Kentucky, six dasher. My name is Jake Moog, I am from North Idaho. I shoot a six dasher. My name's Josh Ulicki uh, from West Bend, Wisconsin. Uh, six dasher. Matthew Caruso from Conroe, Texas. Six BRA. Play Blocketer, Lady, Oklahoma. Six five Creedmoor. David Preston from Greenville, Pennsylvania. Six dasher. Ken Sanoski, I'm from Kennerdale, Pennsylvania. Six millimeter dasher. To get to this point, there have been 20 courses of fire over the last two days. That's right. Each carried a $1,000 prize for the top shooter, plus a $5,000 prize for the two-day match winner. Here's how that money spread out. Stage money from the qualifier? I did, yeah, I got a, I got a stage yesterday. I, I won three stages on Friday, so I got 3,000 bucks in the bank, and I'm hoping to add a couple more. You have any stage money from uh, the last two days? Just one. Yeah, yeah I got four stage wins, um, which is $4,000. I did. I got one. Sure did. Uh, yeah, I won two stages. So, yep, got 2,000. And one of the stages was one of those Utah air gun things. So I won a really cool air rifle that, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get. I had one day one and two yesterday. So I got three. I won one stage. And, and I won the two-day match, which had prize money as well. But I ended up winning one for $1,000. 15,000 from stages go to these finalists. And as Austin mentioned, he won the two day, and so that's 5,000 in his bankroll. And that means only 5,000 is going away with non qualifiers. There's another 10,000 in stage money today, plus the winner gets the AG Cup and $30,000 in cash. And the action starts now. The first courses of fire will be stages 23, Manor's Stocks Limestone, and 24, the NRA Bunker. Thanks to the morning fog, these targets are most visible at this early hour. The NRA Bunker will see 12 of the 17 competitors clean the stage. Jason Green will be the quickest. Got, got me for a clean, I got 10 out of 10. Awesome, first stage of the match. First stage, trying to fight the jitters, just uh, go in there and shoot my game. It's a different story on the Manor's Limestone. <laughs> the movement and troop line of targets are separating the field early. It's five positions. <laughs> Two shots from each on targets getting further away as you advance positions. 
The final target is just under 600 yards. Ben Gossett is the first to clean it. It's a good one to start the, the match. A little bit of moving. Uh, five different rocks, five different distances. Able to get it clean, so good start. In addition to Ben, Jason Green, Clay Blacketer, Derek Webster, and Cole Higginbotham will all clean the stage. Stage two, that's uh, two cleans in a row. I just really tried to stay on the gun where I could see exactly where it was hitting. Ran it out clean. The fastest to score all 10 available points and bank the stage money for the Manor Stocks Limestone is Matt Caruso. I tried to go a little quick because I felt comfortable on the targets. Uh, I could see all my impacts and I was pretty comfortable on those rocks. They're nice and steady. I used a big bag, so I was just cruising. Well, after two events, there are six competitors with clean scores. Jason Green and Matt Caruso each have stage money. The challenges go up and the distances stretch out when the AG Cup continues. Shooting USA is brought to you by Smith & Wesson and the M&P 9 Shield Plus with 13 plus one capacity in the same thin lightweight design that has made the Shield the number one choice for concealed carry. Two stages down, two guys have money, and six are still clean for the match. The morning fog is lifted, so the first of the long distance stages are now in play. The longest shots of the final will be on the Leopold Optics Hide. From a hasty position inside the hunting blind, competitors will engage the plate rack at 487 from left to right. After each shot at the plate rack, a confirmation shot must be made at the 75% IPSC target, set at 1,061 yards. Ben Gossett will be the first to clean the stage. Plate rack at 487 and a confirmation at 1,060. And I honestly just got lucky with a consistent win the whole, the whole stage, so real thankful for that one. This stage is proving to be a major separator. Half the field moves through before another clean score is posted. That will be Dave Preston. Keep in mind, to have a shot for the stage money, it takes a clean score and a faster time than Ben's 121.11. Dave misses it by one second. Went good, I'm happy, cleaned it, 10 for 10. I think probably one of the hardest stages of the match. We'll see. State. Jeff Geary will be the next marksman to connect all 10 shots on this challenging stage, and he's quick about it. Jeff is all done in 120.27, putting him on top for the cash for now. Jason Green is next, and by the rules of this match, he has no information on condition or holds from any of the others that have run the stage before him. That's right, everyone is required to keep their info to themselves. But it's not a problem for Jason. He's connecting and that's what matters. Final shot on the long target is good and 112.83 earns him another thousand. Clean so far for the day. So far, so far, uh, I, I got nothing to say, but I'm just to shoot my game. What'd you do here? You dial for the rack or did you dial for the far? So I dialed the rack, close shot. Uh, I started out my first shot, dialed, hit the rack, dialed my long shot. I started thinking, it's like, if I dial this back and forth, I ain't gonna have time. So then I started just hold over with the zero being on the, the circle rack. What was the holdover for the- uh... 6.8. Yeah, 6.8, I had those 6.8. The next stage will be every bit as challenging. Vortex Optics Long Range Field Fire is a troop line of squares, starting at 717 and running out to 974. Two shots on each target from the prone. Targets one, two, and three are 10 inch, and the last two are 12 inch. That's roughly one and a half MOA. Working far to near, this is an elite level challenge. Chris Katalik will be the first to clean stage 21. Followed immediately by Chad Heckler. 
just half a second off the pace. Jason Green will keep his clean streak running in the match, and he will get through stage 22 in a very strong 101.14. He's best so far. Uh, everything went good on that one there. Uh, went in with the game plan. Thanks for the game plan held. I got 10 out of 10. Troy Lawton will get through with all 10 of his points, but he's off the pace set by Jason. It'll be the same story for Dave Preston. He stays clean for the match, taking 10 from stage 22, but not quite fast enough to take the money. The final competitor to run stage 22 will be Ben Gossett. The list of names at the front with clean match scores has shortened, but after stage 22, it will still include Ben. And his bankroll will grow by a grand. Ben just edges Jason Green by a tenth of a second. Um, I was able to clean the stage. Um, I saw Trace really good, and I was hitting. Went really good. Four stages down, and two are still clean for the match. Jason, Ben, and Matt have stage money, but there are six stages to go. We've got more from the AG Cup next. Shooting USA is brought to you by Hornady Security and the new Ammo Cabinet. Keep your ammunition secure and organized and free up room in your gun safe with the modular Ammo Cabinet by Hornady Security. Four courses of fire down, three competitors have money, and two are still clean for the day. The courses of fire that are coming up are just as difficult as those we've already shot, and as the day goes on, these targets get smaller. Stage 25 is RCBS and Hoppies, animals big and small. Two targets, one large, one small, from 480 out to 780. Hit the larger animal silhouette first to earn a chance at the second point from the small target. There are five pairs for a total of 10 possible points. Francis Cologne gets it done 10 for 10 in just over 52 seconds. That last target saw those little rabbits. Uh, they, they definitely make you thump a little. <laughs> ben Gossett is clean so far for a reason. Watching him shoot is almost hypnotic. his bolt throw. Cut. Even his elevation adjustments are so fluid, it's calming. Everything is measured and precise. Cut. His follow through. Ben cleans stage 25, 10 for 10 in 104.2. Jason Green will not have the same outcome on the stage. For the first time in the final, Jason stumbles. The small target at 741 gets away. And then again, the small target at 784 is a miss. A total of six competitors will clean stage 25. The fastest to do it will be Clay Blacketer, earning him the stage money. Stage 26 is sponsored by Utah Air Guns. They've got an extra incentive for the top shooter. There's a little bit more on the line today on the Utah Air Gun stage here. Uh, winner of this stage is going to get the brand new FX Pantera on top of their $1,000 for winning the stage. So. Well, the course of fire is another movement heavy challenge. Five positions on the tires, two shots from each at two targets an eight inch circle at 455 and a 10 inch square at 717. Derek Webster is first to post a clean score and he's got a new strategy. A little bit better. I was planning on cleaning it, so I cleaned it. I think my strategy going forward is I'm gonna plan to clean every stage and then I'll probably just do that. Jeff Gary will also claim all 10 points from stage 26. Nathan Cushman will as well. The air rifle and the stage money will go to Ken Sanofsky. After this amazingly fast performance, 
Ken gets all 10 in 104.47, more than 15 seconds quicker than the next fastest time. Huh. Finally, one good stage. What happened over there, kid? Uh, I went fast and didn't miss. Now it's Ben. As the only competitor left with a clean score for the day, he's in the lead and he's got everyone wondering, will he be able to keep it going? This is measured and deliberate, just as it has been all morning. There's a 90 second par time on all of these courses of fire, so he does have to keep it moving. Final position. That was tight. Uh, I'm just in, in the zone. <laughs> um, I've been really fortunate. The wind's just been consistent for me. Um, I'm not really having to do much. I'm, you know, really trying to settle in on the first couple positions and trying to see exactly where I'm hitting. And then I'm kind of just picking up the pace and trying to get through these stages. Um, that, was, that was a really good one. Oh, good. Well, the Ultimate Ballistics live scoreboard shows Ben Gossett with all 60 possible points. Stage 27, the Zoom Bait Company Street Field Fire. It's another troop line of targets, and these are small. All K&M logos. The first two are 5 inches at 429 and 515, a 6 inch at 557, and then 7 inches at 622, and again at 657. Two shots on each from the car hood. Nathan Cushman will be the first to clean the stage. Ben Gossett will be the next to do it. Followed by Clay Blacketer. And finally, Derek Webster, after a mag change out of his back pocket. Seven of the final stages are done. Six competitors are holding stage money, including the match leader. And Ben Gossett is literally making history. This course of fire was designed for an elite level. And Ben, he's making it look like a club match. Yeah, he is. There are three stages left to be shot. We've got those for you next. Out of all you'll spend on shooting this year, this is the most important, a membership in the NRA. Join at ShootingUSA.com and I'll pay $10 for you. It's that important. Shooting USA is brought to you by Colt, still making history. And by Armageddon Gear, the leader in long range shooting accessories. The final three stages await, and through the first seven, Ben Gossett has not missed a single shot. It's a level of consistency I don't think anyone thought possible. The Foundation Stocks Rooftop KYL, another movement-heavy challenge that has a very tight shot to navigate twice. It will be two passes through the rack set at 365. The small target is three inches. That's sub MOA. It's one shot from each position over and back on the roof simulator, working through the rack. And that small target is the toughest for the stage. Once they're back to the starting point, that's it. Finally, it's another pass through the rack from the prone. Jake Millard will be one of the quickest to clean stage 28. The fastest to clean the foundation stocks rooftop KYL is Dave Preston. His final five shots takes less than 10 seconds. 55-32 wins the stage money. Oh my God. Ben Gossett is the next competitor to run stage 28, and right away you can see there is less urgency in his pace. Maintaining his clean score is way more important than racing on this course of fire. Two more to go, still clean, so just thankful everything's holding together. Stage 29, the Hornady Urban Shoot House. 12 points this time, four shooting positions through the structure, three equal size targets at 561, 607, and 658. 
Watching Ben work through this stage, it's like seeing a masterclass on efficient, consistent shooting. 12 more points in the bag in 1 minute 22.93 seconds. Fastest to clean stage 29, Jake Miller. The young man claims the stage money in just under one minute and one second. A great way to round out his bankroll for the weekend. Jake's total for the event, $5,000. The final course of fire is Bartline Barrel's Urban Speed. 10 shots, 10 positions on a 10 inch square at 561. Jeff Geary is first in the order to take on stage 30, and he will end up claiming the money. All 10 shots find the target in one minute 15.79. Jason Green, Chris Katalik, and Austin Bushman will also clean stage 30. The one everyone is waiting for is Ben Gossett. Through nine courses of fire and 92 shots so far, he has been perfect. There's another. This course of fire is elite level, and Ben is picking off points without drama. These shots are as smooth and deliberate as we have seen all day. With each impact, Ben is another step closer to making history. There's the sixth position. If he hits this one, the title is his. Oh, he is now unbeatable for the cup, but can he clean the match? Two shots left. And to make history, he's done it. A perfect 102 for the final. Ben Gossett is the 2022 AG Cup champion. Well, there you have it. History and a healthy five-figure payday for Ben Gossett. Well, he earned it, and so did Jason Green, just four points back, as well as Jeff Gary, just six behind. And Jeff's 5,000 come courtesy of two stage wins, plus 3,000 for that podium finish. A nice weekend for him. That's right. And a total of 14 competitors will go home with money from this match. Another success. Coming next today, history is for sale at one of the largest military gun shows. Shooting USA is brought to you by the Civilian Marksmanship Program and the firearms from America's military history. It's a place to learn about firearms history and maybe even take some home. The Middle Tennessee Civil War show and sale is a 35-year tradition in Central Tennessee, right outside Nashville, where buyers, sellers, and lookers gather to deal and trade in relics of the past. This just may be the loudest show and sale on the Civil War show circuit. And it's certainly the largest under one roof with over 800 tables full of guns and relics, just a few miles from where the Battle of Franklin, one of the war's biggest and bloodiest encounters, helped change the course of history. And here you can put your hands on genuine surviving pieces of that battle and many others. He was with the 12th Consolidated Tennessee Infantry. Oh, sir. Uh, his name was John R. McMillan. The Confederate soldier who carried this model of 1861 Remington revolver fought at Murfreesboro, Franklin, and Nashville, 
all of those battles just a few miles from the show grounds. This was something that could have saved his life or could have ended somebody else's. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. cool war. I mean, so it's a, it's something to be revered. I mean, it's a piece of history that you're all doing. We're here where the Battle of Franklin was. All these areas right around here uh, were actual battlegrounds, and now then turned into state parks, national parks. Murfreesboro right down the road, Stones River. A huge amount of activity took place, you know, within 20 miles of this, this building right here. Civil War relic traders call this the big party at the end of the year with sellers coming from 40 states and Great Britain. And many of the weapons and artifacts that you see here are so rare that you might not see them anywhere else, like this John Overton rifle, one of maybe a hundred known to survive and made just a few cannon shots away from where we are. After the fall of Harper's Ferry, they brought all the machinery down to Nashville from Harper's Ferry. John Overton made this rifle in Nashville for the Confederacy from the captured machinery at Harper's Ferry. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Shows like this one are where some of the best deals get made. While a lot of trading is done over the internet these days, face to face, just feels better. This is a model 1860, uh, naval hey, cutlass oh, with the scabbard. Uh, what's interesting about this that Brian just told me is this is made for a lefty, a left-hander. So who would have thought? And everything has a story connecting today to a former time. This is a union kippy that's been tarred so that it would be waterproof. As the saying goes, if you don't you don't keep track of history, you know you're you're gonna it's gonna disappear, but you're also going to repeat it if you don't remember it. Only at the Middle Tennessee show would you find weapons that are local two ways, like this Confederate sword made in Nashville and found at Franklin. And it's got the ancient label on it. Rebel Saber found at the Battle of Franklin. That's pretty cool. It doesn't get much more homegrown than that. Well, all of these bullets were were found right under this log in the river. So these, all of these bullets at one time were shot into the same tree and they had already fell out. The local metal detector club brought in a log shot full of Yankee bullets found in a river near the Murfreesboro battlefield and several Union encampments. They are 58 caliber three ring minis. Those may not have come from the actual fighting. Based on where it was found, uh, I believe that it was just used for the soldiers to either take uh, target practice and just use the tree as a target, or maybe they used it to just unload their rifles um, and just to just basically have a target to shoot at. The life of the Civil War soldier is all right here. The uniforms they wore, the weapons they carried, even the food they ate, like this hardtack biscuit, a toothbreaker both then and certainly now. You never know what new treasures might show up here and what stories might be behind them. But for this one weekend, we can all experience a vital part of our nation's history, live and in person. You can see that history and take some of it home. After all, it is a show and sale. But who shows up may be changing as the collecting and trading hobby transitions to a younger audience. More on that part of the story coming next. Shooting USA is brought to you by Les Fair Customs 1911s, because you'll accept nothing less. And by the United States Practical Shooting Association. Find your local matches at USPSA.org. Like a lot of shooting-related activities, the audience for these shows tends to be older. And that's a big deal in the Civil War collecting and trading community. As the older collectors fade away, new younger ones are coming in. So the organizers of this and other shows have started including more recent relics for a more recent audience. 
what attracted me most about this sword is the patina on it, because you never see this like bronzy patina. You always see like the chocolate patina more so. That is exactly what the military collecting hobby wants to see. Young people getting interested in the past and not just the Civil War. A World War II German Africa Corps helmet in very fine condition overall. Even has a pen which a soldier would have added. Some paperwork here, and a US soldier actually brought it home after the war. There are no exact numbers on just how old or how young these collectors may be, but it's pretty obvious at any show that middle-aged men make up most of the audience. And as they fade away over time, collectors and dealers have to adjust to the times. I do social media, my Facebook page, my I have TikTok. My kids are like, I dance on TikTok? And I'm not dancing or doing anything like that often, but uh, I have a lot of new customers, and some of them, they can't afford an Overton gun for 10 or 15,000, but they can buy, you know, entry-level pieces, and, and I may actually offer them layaway. Something like a set of rare World War II Army rifles. These are some of the few M1s made by Winchester. Just might be what gets a new collector interested. And bringing those younger ones in is so important to keeping this branch of history alive. It is because people are distracted with uh, TV, video games, and social media. But there are people that are interested, and when you find those, you you know you gotta take them under your wing and be nice to them and try to keep them interested. But whether these younger visitors are more interested in the old or the relatively new, the point is they're here and they're learning. The show is still mostly Civil War relics and documents, but buyers these days might see more modern uniforms or a 19th century replica of a medieval battle helmet. I think it's good because I think being able to draw people into seeing history is a really, really good thing. Because, I mean, if we learn what the people in the past have done, then that's good because we respect them by remembering what they have done. Because if they hadn't have done what they did, we wouldn't be here today. It's a, a reproduction of a Whitney revolver, which was a Civil War used and carried revolver, a 36 caliber. Civil War reenactor Austin Vick has already gotten his son and his younger brother to take an interest in military history. And he's disappointed that so many their age have not. It's a shame. People are too tied up on, on social media and digital, the digital life, um, and they, they're not interested in our history. If you don't know our history, you don't know where we came from. This is a neat gun. They made in 1847-1848, Remington in Herkimer, New York at the time, made uh, about a thousand of these. And sometimes history can be pretty strange, like the Remington mule ear carbine, which cocked with the hammer off to one side and fired with a roll of caps like a toy pistol. If you had any other option, I'm sure this was not your first choice, but a lot of them did get up uh, getting used. Traders tell us there's been some increase in younger collectors, and some of that has to do with movies and videos. Some of these video games are so incredibly authentic and realistic. You have uh, teenagers coming into shows now who know as much about some of these World War II weapons as the guys behind the table selling them. And while modern media, games, and movies are a distraction for potential new collectors, they're also an important way of reaching that new wired audience. You know, in this day and time, they're not learning a lot of the history about this stuff. Um, and it's a struggle for us to get new people. And we're trying to use more social media advertising as opposed to the old TV, newspaper ads, and things like that. And that's probably gonna be our future is more social media advertising. The challenge now is to continue getting these pieces of living history in front of more younger collectors who can preserve them for the future as they become this generation's keepers of what was once in their history books and now is real.
we're temporary caretakers of these pieces, so we try to do our best to conserve them and protect them and pass them along to somebody else who will revere and protect them. That's that's pretty much our position is, and our job is to be a good caretaker and curator for that next generation. And relic dealers tell us that one World War II movie and one TV series have done the most to spark new interest in collecting. Those would be Band of Brothers and Saving Private Ryan. Well, still ahead, John's got a custom-built long-range rifle to show you, built one at a time to order by a very talented gunsmith. Shooting USA is brought to you by Smith & Wesson and the new M&P 2.0 compact pistols with innovative features. The trigger, grip, frame, and finish, the M&P 2.0 compact. Well, after watching the best precision rifle shooters in the world dice it up, maybe you're thinking of a precision rifle for yourself. Well, this is an option from Ace Precision Firearms, and they call it the Spectre. This is the top-of-the-line rifle build specced out by Josh Wallace, and everything here is to his exact specification. It starts with the action. This is a short pattern. There is a long pattern available. The bolt is two lug and it's a 90 degree throw with an enclosed ejector. The rail is 20 MOA. The barrel on this build is a proof research and it's chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. The 5 8 by 24 threads come with a protector which will allow you your choice of muzzle device or suppressor. When specking out your build, there are a number of selected barrels to choose from. For your trigger, it's one of two Bix and Andy offerings, either the Dakota or the Taxport Pro. All of it rides in a full-length billet aluminum chassis system with an AR-style pistol grip and all of the adjustability you would expect from a chassis system. There's a full-length Arca Swiss rail as well as a small piece of Picatinny rail up front. The Ace Precision Firearms Spectre rifles are built one at a time and to order, so there is a bit of a lead time. Prices here start about $4,500. Well, by now, if you're into any type of precision shooting, you probably have an Armageddon Gear Game Changer bag. And if that is the case, it's likely that yours is like mine and made of wax canvas. Well, what if I told you there is a way to make your Game Changer in wax canvas better? And by better, I mean more weather resistant and have greater stick to your rifle or whatever prop you're building your improvised position off of. Well, this is the way. Rebel Rooster Bag Wax, and this is how it works. Start by applying the wax to the surface of your bag and be liberal with it. <laughs> liberal. Then, heat it up with a hair dryer. Now, a word of caution here. Don't use your wife's hair dryer for this process. You have no idea how much money your wife spent on her hair dryer. You get caught doing this with her high-end deal, it's a bad look. This cheapo was 12 bucks at Walmart. Save yourself the headache. Once everything is good and warmed up, just massage it in. And the benefit is cumulative, so if your bag is new, go over it again. Well, now your bag will grip your rifle better than ever, and that will give you a better chance of spotting your impact. The good news here, Rebel Rooster Bag Wax is 100% natural, packaged and made in America, and your shooting bag is just the beginning. You can weatherproof any canvas or leather material, so your gloves, boots, shoes, you name it. It's available direct from Rebel Rooster or on the AG website, price here, 13 bucks. But coming next today, a classic impossible shot in our 30th year of broadcasting. Shooting USA is brought to you by SnapSafe and the full line of Trek Light lock boxes. Affordable security for home or travel. Get 15% off with code SUSA15 at snapsafe.com. If you have not noticed, this is our 30th year of continuous reporting on the firearms industry and competition as the first and longest running shooting sports show. So we've got history. 
But in our 30th year, we also have the newest tech, QR codes to get you instant information on anything you see in the shows. New tech. But right now, we're dipping into our history to bring back the late Bob Munden, who was not only fast to draw, but also precise in his impossible shots. Only Bob Munden would be unhappy about hitting a steel target from 70 yards away after sighting it in through a mirror. Remember, Bob doesn't go past 10 yards in his exhibition shows. So far today, he's been perfect from 25 and 70. But for his impossible shot, well, just listen to this. Legitimate 200 yards. 200? 200 yards. You're gonna skip right past 100, right past 150, and you're the gonna go to 200? The word, the, word luck, the word luck really applies here. Oh my gosh. And it's just an absurd shot. Absurd. Yeah, it's gotta be one of the most absurd shots. How do you spell absurd? <laughs> B-O-B. Yeah, that's right. One thing we wanna make absolutely clear here is that from these wild distances that Bob's shooting at today, the balloon is there to confirm the hit. He's aiming for the steel, so if he hits up here, and it breaks a balloon, it's a good hit. If he hits down here and it breaks a balloon, it's a good hit. And if I make this, I'm gonna sleep real good tonight. Real good. In fact, I'm not humble as it is, but this is really gonna push me over the edge of uh, totally bananas, you know? If I can pull it off. Real fond of yourself, aren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I gotta love myself, nobody else will. That one misses just high and just right. And there's more working against Bob than just the general difficulty of the shot. But look at the wind that we've got blowing today here in Montana. It is a whipping, and that's making this shot even harder. Yeah, well, I'm using the body to help put everything together. Mm -hmm. so I line this up, I gotta line this up on, line it up, gotta line the mirror onto the sights, get the sights lined up, and once I get them lined up, then I move my body to get the combination onto target. Got it. Ha. That's the hardest deck gun shot I've done in a long time. Well, hold on, it's not over yet. Just listen. No bullet impacting steel. We figure it was frag after the bullet hit the ground. So Bob gets back at it. Amazingly, it's the same thing with that one. Maybe it'll help if we could get Bob's mind off how hard this shot is and onto his uh, favorite topic. Is there a prop that fits you better than that right there, Bob? I really like the mirror shot because every once in a while I get to see myself. You know, That's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah, I look in the mirror and I think, you know, my Wayfarer stand up real good, you know, oh. yeah, my hat's nice. Look at that, nice shave, huh? Yeah, I did that myself. Now he's in that Bob frame of mind. You got it done. 200 yards, you said impossible, absurd. I don't know what kind of superlatives we can throw out there. 200 yards, that was ridiculous. It really was. What are the kids saying today? They're saying something like, it, it was stupid good. Stupid good. Ridiculous, absurd, radical. Awesome. Over, over the head. Tubular. Yeah. Munden. Yeah, Munden. We're not really like this. <laughs> really, I'm not. <laughs> A look back to the amazing Bad Bob with the help of Brian Special. And looking forward, you've got our QR codes to get you all the news from today's show. Or go direct to ShootingUSA.com. For all of us, I'm Jim Scout and shoot safely, shoot often, and keep them in the 10 ring.